to everybody. Y'all ready to have church this morning? Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Let's worship God. Give God thanks. Give Him praise and honor. Father, we come to worship you this morning. We come to give you glory and praise and honor. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all that you have done for us. We lift up our voice to bless and praise you. We thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Lord God, for each and every one. Touch every heart, every mind, every soul, oh God. Draw us closer to you this morning as we worship and praise and give you glory. Bless the service of God. Bless everything we do. We look to you and ask your blessing upon it. In Jesus' name, we ask all these things. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing that hymn on page 84. So grab a hymnal and join us this morning as we sing. Page 84 at the cross.
know. Father, we worship you and thank you and praise you and bless you this morning. We just want to give you all the glory, give you all the honor. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy and grace. We love and appreciate you. We worship you this morning. We ask God that you come and meet with us. Be with us here in the house of the Lord. Bless and accomplish your will tonight. We ask God that you will touch every heart, meet every need, draw each and every one of us closer and closer to you. We love and, and appreciate you, and we come to give an offering of praise and thanksgiving to your wonderful name. Father, receive our prayers. Receive our praise this morning and draw us closer as the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Open our hearts and minds. house of the Lord Amen. on the day after the 4th of July <laughs> where everybody probably had a hangover <laughs> stayed up all night lighting up fireworks I mean, our neighbors put on a good show it was nice they had a good show in our neighborhood and we were enjoying it but bless the little girl's heart she couldn't handle it <laughs> she was screaming and hollering like crazy so we had to take her in. <laughs> but it was nice. It was good to, to, you know, it's nothing like the smell of gun smoke, you know. You know the old show, Mad Dylan, <laughs> and the smell of gun smoke. It's just, well, it's not gun smoke. It's, you know what I'm talking about. Gunpowder, gun whatever it is, you know. It smells good. The smell of freedom. The smell of freedom to know what, you know, um, what went on so we can enjoy our freedom. Thank God. Thank God. He died. To make man holy, as the song said, and they die to set man free. Thank God for freedom. It's a wonderful thing to cherish. And God, God is it's a blessing to, to be in America. Amen? Amen. It's a blessing to be in America. We're glad you're here this morning. You'd have made it out. Praise God. <laughs> Thank God for you being in the house of the Lord. So we have a good service this morning. Just open up your heart. Let God bless you. Let God touch you. Let God draw you closer to him and enjoy the service. You that are watching online, just open up your heart to God. Open up your heart to the Lord and let God bless you this morning. At this time, we receive a Sunday morning tithe and offering. We ask Brother Hinsher. We call Mr. Jimmy Lee. Can <laughs> you please pray for the offering this morning? Father, we pray that you would bless this offering, bless the gift, and the giving. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you.
done so much to show to us that God loves and God cares. And you know, there's a lot of religion out there that do not, do not know the love of God. They do not understand the love of God. They serve God out of fear. They serve God as someone who is just ready to judge them and ready to destroy them. But by God's grace this morning, <laughs> well, Lisa's not here. She's not. She's not doing too well. <laughs> we got Brother Snorton running the thing, and I don't know what he did, but. <laughs> He did something, but we're glad what you, whatever you did, thank you. <laughs> thank you for whatever you're doing, <laughs> whether good or bad. <laughs> but but um, she, she's not feeling too well this morning. That's the reason why she's not here, but that's the reason why I'm playing the tambourine. I don't like doing it, but oh well. <laughs> but I'm glad each and every one of you are here this morning, and you're here to worship God and to praise God. Amen? Amen. Pray for one another. Pray for each other, you know, and we need, we need each other in this life. Whether we understand it or not, we are part of the body of Christ, and uh, we all need the prayers of each other. So pray for each other, and let's worship God together. I want to read to you this morning from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 14. Verse 28, I'll read verse 28 for now. 28 through 31. Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 through 31. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked in the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said, O thou of little faith, wherefore dost thou doubt? And I want to use also as a text this morning, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And I want to use that where it says, looking unto Jesus, and where the Bible said, and when, and when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. And when he saw the wind boisterous, and he was afraid and beginning to sink, and where the Bible said, looking unto Jesus. And with the help of the Lord this morning, I want to preach in a message entirely. Looking at the wrong things. Looking at the wrong things. Let's look to the Lord in prayer this morning. But a so yes. would you please pray? Yes. Father, thank you for our pastor. Father, thank you for each soul that's present. Father, touch each one heart according to their individual needs. Father, Help us understand your will. Father, let us take this message, apply it to our life, and do which is pleasing in your sight. Father, bless the message and the mess messenger in Christ's name. Amen. 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 <coughs> I want to preach about looking at the wrong things. You said, Preacher, how do you know what I've been looking at? <laughs> well, I don't know. God does. <laughs> Amen. Were you following me around? <laughs> Tap into my computer? <laughs> that's not what I'm preaching about this morning. <laughs> Maybe that's what the Holy Ghost preaching about. That's not what I'm preaching about. <laughs> I'm preaching about looking at the wrong things. You know, sometimes we get caught up looking at the wrong things instead of looking at what God wants us to look at. And so we find a story about Peter walking on the water, and I'll read a little bit more to you, but this story is among one of the many stories in the Bible that demonstrates the power of God and the power of faith. Not only does it show us God's power to do the impossible, 
but it also shows us man's faith in God that can cause him to do the impossible. We see Jesus walking on the water. That's impossible, amen? But also we see a man, Peter, because of his faith in Christ, doing the same thing. And let me read a little bit more the Bible reading to you here. I just read a few verses. But the Bible said in verse 22 of the same chapter, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And so that brings us there. And, and the Bible said, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Don't you like when God comes to you and say those words? I'm here. It's me. Don't be afraid. And you know, as a parent, you say that to your parent, to your children a lot of times. And when they're young, they're scared of things. You said, it's okay, baby. I'm right here. It's me. I got you. You don't, you don't need to be afraid. And you can understand the same thing coming from the Lord. He told his disciples, he said, don't be afraid. I'm here. Amen. It's me. It's me. And I love this, what happened. And when Peter knew it was Jesus, the Bible said, Then, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, if it's really you, Jesus, out here walking on the water, bid me come or tell me to come unto thee. And the Lord said, Come. You know, you give God a challenge, you will answer that challenge. Amen? You give God a challenge, you will answer that challenge. And so Peter said, Lord, if it's you, and the story explains itself. Jesus, they were there teaching the people, and, and Jesus sent them away, the disciples away. He said, you go out, you go out, you keep, you go over to the other side. He said, I will send the, the, the people away, and when I'm done, I will come. And the Bible said, he steal away for some quiet time. He went out there, and he prayed, spent some time with his father. He said, but when he looked out, and he saw that the disciples out there, they were in the midst of their lake, tossed with the waves, and things weren't looking too good to them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came unto them walking on the water. He came unto them walking on the water, and... Uh, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, come, bid me to come. And the Bible said Jesus told him to come, and he was doing good. He got out of the ship. Think about that. He got out of the boat, out of the ship, and he was walking on water. How many of you like to walk on water? Amen. <laughs> That's an incredible thing. That's an incredible thing to be able to step on. Now, think about it. He wasn't just walking on a water that was nice and calm. It was rough out there. Amen. The wind was boisterous, tossed, the boat was tossed back and forth in a storm. But the Bible said while he was walking, he got out there and he began to walk on water. He was doing good, everything was going great. But all of a sudden, he took his eyes off of Christ and he began to look at the waves. Amen. He began to look at the waves and that's where the message come from this morning. A lot of times people are doing good in their Christian life until they take their eyes off of Christ. Amen? Amen. Until they take their eyes off of Jesus and just like Peter, all of a sudden they start sinking. They start drowning. They start going under because they are looking at the wrong things. Amen? Amen. God doesn't want us to focus on the wrong things tonight. God, or this morning, why I keep saying tonight? God doesn't want us to, maybe y'all need to come back tonight. We have service tonight at 6 30. You're all invited to come. Let's come and worship God. Amen? Keep your eyes in Jesus. Quit looking at the wrong things. Just focus on the Lord. So many times people start their Christianity just like Peter. They got out on the spiritual sea, if you will. They fall in love. They fell in love with Jesus. They come down to an old-fashioned altar and they give their life to Christ. They believe the gospel message that Jesus came and he was born and took upon born into this world, took upon him human flesh, and he died on the cross and rose again from the dead to set them free and they accept him into their life they, they repent of their sins and forsake their sins and accept christ into their life 
And man, they're walking on water, if you will. They're living the life. They're enjoying the fellowship of God. They're doing good. They're on top of the world, walking with Jesus on top of the world, on top of the sea that we call the world. And they're doing good. And on all of a sudden, they take their eyes off of Christ. All of a sudden, they take their eyes off of Jesus. And before you know it, they're sinking to the bottom of the sea. God doesn't want us to sink. Amen? God doesn't want us to go under. God wants us to be on top of things. And the only way you can do that is to keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Don't lose focus this morning. Stay focused on Jesus. Peter stayed on top of the water because he kept his eyes on Jesus. But as soon as he took his eyes off Christ, he began to sink. He was looking at the wrong things. He was looking at the wrong things. God doesn't want us to look at the wrong things tonight because as soon as you begin to start looking at the wrong things, your life will begin to crumble. Things will begin to go in the wrong direction. Your life will begin to fall apart. Your circumstances will begin to cause you to sink instead of you staying on top of the water. Amen? Look unto Jesus as the Bible says, Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the world. Looking at the wrong things. Will get us in trouble every time. Amen. Remember David? He was doing so good. He was doing so good. So good. He was doing so good as king. Winning all the battles and conquering lands and destroying all the enemies. But one day he decided, you know what? I'm going to send the army out there to fight the battle. And I'm going to stay home and be lazy. That's bad right there. Amen. Once you start giving into that lazy spirit, I'm going to stay home. The armies of God are out there fighting, but I'm going to stay home and be lazy. And the Bible said, after a couple of days of laziness, he got out there on the rooftop and he looked. <laughs> he looked and he saw Bathsheba out there bathing herself. And there comes the devil. There comes the devil. Hey, what do you look at that? That looks nice, don't you think? A nice Coke bottle shape. Everything's perfect. You know, the devil knows how to make things look good. Amen. Same thing he did to Adam and Eve in the garden. They were doing good. Man, think about the walk that they had with God. I mean, in the garden there, God made them, placed them in the garden. They are enjoying life. They didn't have to work a day in their life. Amen. Just go out there. The fruits are there. They have all the animals. They have everything going good their way. And everything is going good. God said, I give you dominion over everything. Enjoy everything. Except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Bible said they were doing good. And the Bible talked about it in Genesis 3, 8. He said, God even came down in the evening time and fellowship with them. God came down and walked with them. They had it good until they began to look at the wrong thing. Eve out there looking at that tree. Looking at that tree, that tree that she couldn't eat from. She had all the other trees out there. Enjoy, fill your belly. Go ahead, eat all the mangoes you want. Drink all the coconut. I don't know what the kind of fruit they had out there. But eat all the fruits you want. Enjoy it. It's all yours. But as soon as they begin to look, as soon as they begin to look at the wrong things, the devil saw the opportunity. As soon as they began to look at that tree with curiosity, man, I wonder what that fruit tastes like. I wonder what will happen if I eat that fruit. I wonder what will happen if I just get close to it and begin to touch it and examine it a little bit. And as soon as the devil saw that, he's like, I got them. Amen. You see, as soon as we get start looking at the wrong things, the devil is going to get involved in the situation. Amen. As soon as we begin to start looking at the wrong things, the devil is going to get involved with the situation and he's going to make it look so nice and he's going to make it look so good to your eyes to where you will begin to start feel the need for it and the want for it and next thing you know boom you're gonna start sinking are you with me this morning yes, sir. we need to keep our eyes on god Amen. look i'm preaching about looking at the wrong things it's very dangerous the bible said and the serpent said unto the woman you shall not surely die just go ahead take a bite you see once eve began to look at the wrong thing she opened up herself to temptation and deception. And as same here for us this morning, once we begin to look at the wrong things, uh, the devil just get involved. Amen? And he said, man, they are curious. They are curious about this. They are curious about that. 
the next thing you know he just slips in there and he gets you he's hooking you and he start pulling you down amen he start pulling you down stay focused this morning stay focused on jesus focus keeps us on top of things Focus keeps us on top, of, on top of things. As long as Peter was focused, he stayed on top of the water. As long as he was looking at Jesus, he got out of that boat and he was looking at Christ. He said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. And Jesus said, come. And he got out and he began to walk in water. He was looking at Jesus. He was doing good. Amen. He was doing real good. He was walking. He was living the life, the envy of the world. Maybe all the disciples in the boat just looking on in amazement. My goodness, look at Peter, he's walking in the water, he's not sinking. But you see, as soon as he started looking at the as soon as he took his eyes off Jesus and began to look at the waves, look at his surrounding, getting his eyes off the one that told him he could walk in water. As soon took his eyes off of Christ, the Bible said he began to sink. He began to go under. It is the same way people, people are watching us as Christians. People are looking at your life. Man, they're doing good. My dad is doing good. My mom is doing good. My auntie is doing good. My uncle, look at them. They're serving God. They're doing good. They're watching your life. But as soon as you take your eyes off of what God wants you to do and God wants you to be, you will begin to sink and set a bad example for those around you. Amen? Amen. Looking at our Bible text, in, he in Hebrews chapter 12, he said, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. But before that, in verse 1, he said, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, he said, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. In other words, he's saying we have a race to run. We got something to do. Let's lay aside. Don't, don't look at the way. Don't look at those sins. Don't look at those distractions that are keeping you from being what God wants you to be. Stay focused. Amen? Amen. Y'all with me this morning? Yes, sir. As soon as we start looking at the wrong things, we get in trouble. Amen? So the question is, what you been looking at? I don't need to know. Just messing with you. <laughs> Just keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Focusing on Jesus will keep us on top of things, on top of the things of this world. There's so much craziness going on in our world today. And if we're not careful to stay focused on Jesus, it will suck us under like the waves did to Peter. It is so easy to get distracted by all this craziness that's going on in the world. Amen? It's so easy to get distracted by the race war in America. It's so crazy to, or so easy to get distracted by all the politicians and all the news and the things that are pumped over the media. Amen. It's so easy to get distracted by all the sin out there and uh, and money and all these things that are out there. It's so easy to start looking at the wrong things, mm -hmm. focusing our attention on the wrong things. To take God out of something is to take light out of it and to take hope out of it. And we see what's happening in our world today. They have taken God out of everything. And look at the mess that the world is in. What I'm talking about, I'm saying, they're looking at all the wrong things. Amen? Yes, they're looking at man to fix the problem, but man can't fix it. Yes, Trump can't fix the problem in America. As much as good of a president he may be, he can't fix America. Amen? The doctors can't fix all the problem in the world. The teachers can't do it. The lawyers definitely can't do it. <laughs> Amen? We need God. Amen. We need God. People are looking at all the wrong things for solution. The, the psychiatrists can't fix your problem. All these things, they can't do it. They can only do so much. We need God in our life. We need to go back to the source of help. We need, as the Bible said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He died on the cross. He was elevated, lifted up on the cross to die for the sins of the world because he wanted the world to know 
I am the solution to the problem. I am your help. I am the only one that can fix things. And a lot of times people get all so messed up in their mind and they begin to look for answers in all the wrong places. They're looking at all the wrong things to, to solve the problems when we need to focus on Jesus. Amen? Amen. He's still the answer this morning. The Bible tells us in Psalms 9, verse 17, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. Let me read that again. He said, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. Folks, we need to quit looking. I don't know if you are or not. I'm just preaching what God put in my heart. We need to quit looking at the wrong things. The things of this world will not bring you peace and joy. The things of this world will not get you into heaven. The things and the people of this world cannot do good to your life like God can. Amen? The things of this world, the news media and all this stuff. Are you preaching against the news media? They don't tell you the truth anyways. You know that. Amen? They don't tell you the truth anyways. They just tell you the convenient things that, you, that they know that will stir you. And cause you to think one way. These people are genius too. They're, the Bible said they're wise to do evil. Amen. They're wise to do evil. We need to quit looking at those things and stay focused on God. Amen. Instead of invest all that time on the news, spend some time in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time in your family. You'll probably do good. You might rekindle some fire. <laughs> Amen. You might mend some relationship. You never know. Instead of spending all the time looking at all the negative things, I'm talking about looking at the wrong things. Amen. Mm -hmm. Looking at the wrong things is not going to bring do. It's going to bring nothing but trouble and heartache to your life. We need to look to Jesus. Look at the solution. Quit looking at the wrong things. In Psalms 20, verse 7 through 8, he said, "Some trust in chariots, and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord." They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. David began to speak here. He says, some people are trusting in chariots and horses for the deliverance. He said, but we are going to trust in the Lord. Amen. He's talking about looking at the right thing. Some people are looking at man and, and man-made devices and chariots and horses and stuff like that. He said, but as a child of God, we will look to the Lord. We will trust in the Lord. And then he shows the result in verse 8. He said, they are brought low and fallen. But we that trust in the Lord are risen and stand upright it pays to trust in god this morning man it pays to keep your eyes on what really matters god matters this morning jesus is important amen keep your eyes on jesus look at the solution not the problem the story in the book of john chapter 11 chapter 11 about mary and martha you know lazarus their brother was sick and they sent for jesus to come and the bible said that Jesus tarried. He waited. He spent some time before he got there. And by the time he got there, the Bible said Lazarus was already dead. He was dead four days. And by that time, the body began to start decaying and stuff like that. And so when he got there, Mary, or Martha, both of them actually said, but Martha, in, in John chapter 11, verse 21, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. In other words, she was looking at the problem, right? You see, when God comes to your life, when God comes to visit you in however way He comes, it doesn't matter how big the problem is. He's going to do something about it. Amen? Yeah. God doesn't show up to your life to just leave you empty. God doesn't show up to your problem to leave it unsolved. God doesn't show up to your situation to let it just uh, nothing happen. When He came, the Bible said, if you read on in our Bible reading, He said... In verse 32, and when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Amen? The wind ceased completely. In other words, they were out there in the boat, tossed to and fro in the wind all night long. But when Jesus came in, 
everything was calm. Amen. When Jesus came in, everything was calm. And so when God comes to your life, he comes to bring a solution to your problem. He comes to bring peace or hope or joy or whatever it is the need is. When Jesus comes to come to your life, he coming to do something. And so he came to where Mary and Martha was and all she could see was the problem. All she could see was the problem. But Jesus told, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the answer, Mary. I am the answer, Martha. I know your brother is dead. I know he's in the grave. I am God. I am fully aware of the situation. But just the fact that I showed up, something is getting ready to happen. And you know the end of the story. He went and he rose. He raised Lazarus back to life. And he came out of that tomb Grave clothes, anything. It didn't matter how much he was bound. When God said, come out, he came out. Amen? But the thing is, they were focusing on the problem. Lord, if you've only been here, my brother would, have died, would not have died. You know, a lot of times we get caught up. We're looking at the wrong things that I'm talking about. We're looking at the wrong things. Lord, if you had been... If you had touched me, I would, not, I would not be dealing with this problem or this thing or that thing or whatever the situation is. God, where were you when I was going through this? Maybe God could ask us, just like he said to Peter, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? We don't like when God asks questions now, do we? <laughs> God, where were you? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? What about when God began to ask some questions? You ever read the book of Job and God began to ask Job questions? He said, gird up your loins like a man and stand. I will demand of you some things. Amen? We don't want God to be asking questions now. I'm talking about looking at the wrong thing. She's looking at the problem, not realizing the solution was right there. Same thing in the book of John chapter 6. Jesus fed the multitude. He said, uh, Jesus asked them the question. He said, where shall we buy bread that all these shall be fed? And, and, and they said, there's not enough money to buy enough bread to feed all these people. And in verse 9 of John chapter 6, he said, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, answered. He said, there is a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fishes. He said, but what are they among so many? What is this little bit of food going to do? The problem. What is this little bit of money going to do, Lord? The problem. What is this little bit of faith going to do? The problem. Let's look at the solution. Jesus took those five loaves and two fishes and he prayed and blessed it and multiplied it. And he fed over 5,000 people. Amen. Let's look at the right things this morning. Let's not look at our limited abilities. Let's not look at our weaknesses. Let's look at the right things this morning. Let's look at the power of the God that we serve. You may say this morning, preacher, I only have so much faith. It's small. It's just a little bit. The Bible said if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, it can still do great things. Because your faith is not in you. Your faith is in the power power of God. It's in the unlimited power of Almighty God. A lot of times we are looking at ourselves. What can I do, God? I can't even speak just like Moses. God told Moses to go into Egypt and lead his people out free. He said, Lord, I can't even speak. I'm looking at the problem. Looking at myself, God. I can't do anything. I'm 80 years old. What can I do? Quit looking at the wrong things. Look at the God that's calling you to do it. Look at the God that will help you to do it. Amen? He said, looking unto Jesus. Let's not look at the wrong things. Preacher, I can't even talk to people. You pray, you can't. Amen? You pray, you can't. I know it's kind of hard to invite people to church these days because of all the stuff that's going on. But man, if we just give ourselves to prayer and wait for that time to come, and God let us loose again in this city, think of all the people we can invite it. Amen? How many of you have been invited to this church to come? Amen? Every one of us has been invited. We came. God can bring more people. Amen? God can bring more people. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about a church altogether. Amen? We've been invited and God, God brought us and God saved us. He's here in the city to call out a people for Him. And so He doesn't want us to look at ourselves and our weaknesses and our inabilities to do things. He wants us to look at Him. He is the answer. He can help us this morning. Y'all with me? Yeah. I got, got another hour left. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> the answer. What's the answer, preacher? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Quit looking at the wrong things. 
Quit looking at what you can do and what you're not able to do. Man, if I do that, I won't be here preaching to you this morning. I won't be able to preach. I won't even be here standing up preaching. Not going to minister. <laughs> she never, I don't think she ever played the piano and sing before. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I probably really barely preached. Still can't preach, but I'm trying. Amen. Well, we can't look at the wrong things. We can't look at our our weaknesses and look at, uh, at what we can't be and what we can't do. We got to look at the God that said, follow me and I will make you. Amen. We got to look at the God that said, follow me and I will make you. Just like Peter, as long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, uh, everything is going to be all right. We can walk on the storms of life too. We can walk in the storms of life too. All we have to do is keep our eyes on Jesus. You can come to this man. Looking unto Jesus, our text tells us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He will finish what he started in our life. All we have to do is keep our eyes on him. Listen to what he's saying to you. Follow where he's leading you. And everything will be fine this morning we don't need to look at the wrong things let's look at the right one this morning amen let's focus on jesus he is the answer he's the one that can help us as the bible tells us in psalms 121 verse 1 Lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord and earth thank god this morning that we do not need to look at the wrong things. You say, preacher, I got problems. We all do. Amen. Preacher, we got I got difficulties. Challenging times are coming. I am I'm not uh, uh, unaware of what goes on. Amen. In this world, I know what's happening in the world. He tells us, he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness and high placement and spiritual wickedness in high places. So as Christians this morning, we can't focus on what's going on in the world. Let's elevate our mind on Jesus and stay focused on the Lord. And just like Peter, when we stay focused on the Lord, we will walk on water too. Amen. We will walk above the things of this life. As you bow your heads and close your eyes to the Lord, don't look at the wrong things. Don't look at the discouraging things. Look at the God that says, Look unto me, all ye, and be saved, all ye ends of the earth, and be saved. God loves you this morning. God cares about you. God wants to help you. Just come to Jesus. Look to Jesus this morning. The altar is open. Let's come and find a place to pray. Let's come and find a place to pray and refocus your mind on Jesus. As you begin to play and sing, let's all find a place to pray. Spend some time in prayer this morning. Spend some time in prayer this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We worship and praise you in Jesus' name. Go ahead.
the house of the Lord this morning. Remember, we have service tonight at 6.30. Come and join us. Preach, I'm going to be tired. Don't look at the wrong things. <laughs> Just come and let God bless you. Look at Jesus. He can help us do all things. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll close the service in prayer. Father, we give thanks and praise to you for all that you have done. We love and appreciate you. Thank you for your kindness. We give all the glory to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.